Hi everyone! Welcome to this tutorial, Magical NumPy with Jax. My name is Eric and I will be your instructor today. This tutorial is all about NumPy and Jax and all the ways that the package Jax makes the NumPy API pretty magical. Before we go on, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit. I'm a practicing computational scientist and I primarily work in the worlds of biology and chemistry. What keeps me going in this field is actually understanding how biological and chemical systems work through the lens of computational models. And believe it or not, JAX's extension of the NumPy API has been incredibly helpful for me in this respect. Apart from that, I also enjoy speaking and teaching on technical topics. At previous PyCon, SciPy, PyData, conferences and meetups, I've spoken on data science practices and workflow, Bayesian deep learning and reliability practices for data scientists. And I've also taught tutorials on network analysis, deep learning fundamentals, and Bayesian statistics. My motivation here is really working and learning in the public. These are topics for which making a talk or tutorial has helped me to learn them properly, which helps me in turn help others learn them too. And that, my friends, is exactly why this tutorial on JAX exists. So. What exactly is JAX? If you go to the official JAX repository on GitHub, you'll see this exact line. It says that JAX is a system for composable transforms on NumPy programs. So what exactly do we mean by this? Well, the long story cut short is that JAX provides functions that take your NumPy programs, written as functions themselves, and returns modified versions of them. So by the end of this tutorial, this idea should become much clearer. Now, from the perspective of a user of JAX, I see it as something that supercharges the NumPy API, allowing me to do things like, one, write non-trivial array operations that might otherwise involve loops, two, automatically obtain the derivative of a function that I write in NumPy so I don't have to derive that gradient function by hand, and three, do just-in-time compilation of that exact same code to make it run really, really fast. The overall effect of JAX is that it helps me write code that is much easier to reason about. And with colleagues and interns, we've written all sorts of models, you know, graph neural nets, hidden Markov models, simple feedforward neural nets. And the JAX ecosystem just keeps growing. And if you, in fact, if you look around online, you'll see that DeepMind, which is an Alphabet subsidiary, has really embraced JAX and started putting out lots of auxiliary packages around it. So in my opinion, the Python array computing ecosystem is really getting exciting again. Now, before we go on, I'd like to make sure that we're all on the same page with respect to the prerequisite knowledge that we'll need for this tutorial. I want to make something clear. This isn't to exclude those who don't have the requisite knowledge but still signed up. I still welcome your questions. It's just that possessing this prerequisite knowledge will help you be much less stuck on certain things when you encounter the exercises, which in turn will unblock you when you're trying to learn the JAX idioms. So let's get started. With JAX, because JAX is targeting the NumPy API in mind, therefore familiarity with the NumPy API is a must-have, right? You should know things like the universal functions, like cosine, exponentiation, log, transforms, etc. These are important. And also, you know, how do you do dot products? That point on dot products is actually probably a really good thing to know because I don't want you to become blocked when you do when you encounter dot products in the exercises. So speaking of exercises, most of the exercises that you'll encounter in this tutorial are going to be array computing puzzles. For the exercises that do require context, I do my best to provide it in the accompanying text. But I want to mention that having a mental model of what your array shapes look like will be really, really handy. Right? If you struggle with this, I would recommend following up with this tutorial only after you've taken a NumPy tutorial and get familiar with arrays and their idioms. Now, and rest assured, by the way, all of this content is on GitHub and it's, it's going to be available for you to follow after you do that tutorial. Next up, all of our exercises are written in Jupyter Notebooks. So I'm really expecting that you're familiar with the Jupyter interface. Uh, unlike Joel Gruss, I really do like notebooks, and I can live with some of its limitations because the interactivity that we get is amazing, and I think it's a great literate computing tool to author tutorials with exercises. 
So where does the tutorial material exist? Well, it lives right here on this URL. Uh, so please head over to that URL, uh, ericmjl.github.io slash dl hyphen workshop. I'll leave it there for one little short moment for you to uh, write down, copy down that URL and head over there. All right, finally, let's talk a little bit about the tutorial format. This video that you're seeing is the first of a series of pre-recorded lectures that I've made. Now, I do this because over two years of live training experience have actually taught me that I've got physical limitations myself. Primarily, I get a gag reflex when I speak for too long, and usually the long time drains my energy, much energy levels much faster than I usually can budget for. So, to keep the real life version of me energetic and refreshed for the live Q&A, which is when we get to interact with one another and probably why you're here for a tutorial, I've elected to invest the time upfront to pre-record these lectures for you instead. Apart from the pre-recorded lectures, there's also time budgeted for a summary of the section and exercises uh, and live Q&A in between videos. Right? So please take advantage of these time slots to ask questions, experiment with the code in the notebooks, etc. They keep the tutorial fun for everybody, including the non-virtual version of myself. As I mentioned, there are exercises in Jupyter Notebooks. And if you go to the appropriate pages, which I will point out for you later, you will find a launch binder button that you can click on. Every page in the DL Workshop website that was written as a Jupyter Notebook will have that exact launch binder button that you can click on. So please take advantage of it for doing exercises. Now, if you're ready, so am I. Let's get started, and I'll see you in the next video.